In this example, we will look at modeling contact in a very simple um, setup here. Basically, what we have is we have uh, two plates uh, that are squishing a disk. And um, the way that we're going to model this is by creating separate parts for the disk and for the plate. Um, and then we will define contact interaction between the disk and the plate. Uh, in terms of boundary conditions, um, the plate at the top is prescribed with a one inch downwards displacement. And we'll look at the stresses um, that develop uh, at the contact surface. The plate has a thickness of one inch. Um, and the disc also has a thickness of one inch. Uh, and then um, the radius of the disc is three inches and the plate is 12 by one inches. Um, the plate has Young's modulus of 30,000 KSI and Poisson's ratio of 0.3. And the disc has Young's modulus of 5,000 KSI and Poisson's ratio of 0.4. So we go into Abacus uh, and we create separate parts for the plate and for the um, disk. This is a 2D planar problem, um, deformable base feature shell. Click continue. And I'm just going to draw the plate uh, as having a width of 12 inches and a height of one inch. I will create another part for the disc. And the disc is circle. And it has a radius of three inches. And then for materials, um, we have for the plate, that it is elastic. It has Young's modulus of 30,000 KSI, Poisson's ratio of 0.3. And for the disc, Young's modulus is 5,000 KSI, and Poisson's ratio is 0.4. Uh, we have to create sections to assign to these parts. So let's start with the plate. This is a solid section. Uh, it's homogeneous. Made of the material that makes up the plate. And we'll click OK. And then for the second section, we'll call this the disc. It's also a solid section. And it's made of the material for the disc. Um, then we go in here and we have to do section assignments for the, the disc and for the plate. Um, but uh, yeah. We'll sign this for the disk. And then for the plate. Um, one thing that I need to do is I need to partition my models so that um, I can uh, have nodes meet up when they are assembled together. Uh, so what I will do is I will go back into the part module. I'm going to partition the face using a line that just cuts the plate in half. And I need to make sure that the section assignment is applied to the whole section, and it is. 
So that's good. For the disc, I'm also going to partition the face. And again, I'm just going to draw a line from the top to the bottom. And we'll check the section assignments. And that's okay. Next, we need to um, create our assembly. So we will create instances of the plate. The disk. And the plate again. And I need to translate these instances. So I will move the plate. Starting with um, the part at the the point at the bottom of the plate that's going to meet up with the disc. And then I also need to move this plate, move this point to be touching the disc here, and then we click OK. Then I need to um, create an analysis step. Um, we're just going to be doing a static analysis, so we keep the static general step. Click OK. Um, for incrementation, we're going to change this to increment at 0.1 seconds. And now we need to apply our boundary conditions. Um, for displacement rotation boundary condition at the bottom surface choose uh, U1 and U2 as being restrained and then we will have a boundary condition at the top plate U1 and U2 restrained. Um, in this case, U2 is going to have an imposed displacement of minus one inch, which will push um, this top plate downward to squish the disc. Um, now to define the contact between the disc and the plate, um, because right now these are independent bodies that are not touching each other, and if I were to just run my analysis, the plate would run through the disc without actually coming in contact with it. Um, so we need surface-to-surface uh, -surface contact. And for uh, the master surface that it's asking for, you want to choose the stiffer of the two. Um, so we'll choose this as our master surface. And then for the slave type, um, choose surface. And we're going to select the surface of the disk. For the contact property, we're going to create an interaction property um, and click continue. And this is going to, we have to define the normal behavior and the tangential behavior. So for the normal behavior, we'll define this as having hard contact. And in the tangential direction, um, we can give it, you know, penalty friction or some other 
type of friction, but in this case we're just going to treat it as frictionless. Okay, um, and then we go ahead and click OK. And you can see that um, there are these yellow boxes which indicate that there is an interaction that's been defined between these two surfaces. And now we need to go through and do the same thing between um, the top plate and the disk. So we go to Interactions, Surface to Surface Contact, and again, select the master. And then the disk. And for the contact interaction property, we'll use the same properties as what we defined on the bottom surface. So click OK. Uh, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to um, mesh the parts. For the disk, we'll stick with um, quadrilateral elements and we'll keep the meshing as free. And we'll seed the part. We'll set the global seed at 0.5. We'll see what that does. And then we'll go ahead and mesh it. And then for the plates, we'll mesh it also at 0.5 inches. Click OK. And then we go to jobs and we create a job. Um, we'll just call this contact model. Click OK. And then um, we'll monitor the analysis as it runs. Okay, so uh, the analysis didn't get very far, and then it failed to converge, so let's see what happened. You can see that there's rigid body translation uh, with the plate rolling to the left. Um, so we need to restrain that in this particular problem because that's not what we want. Um, so let me go back to the model. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to impose a boundary condition, displacement rotation, along this edge of symmetry that keeps it from rolling in the U1 direction. And we'll try running the analysis again. The analysis finished. If we look at the results, uh, you can see that you know the plate is squishing as we would expect it to. We can look at the stresses and see how the stress varies along the contact surface. Okay, so that is um, just a basic run through of how to create. Uh, contact in a model. Uh, if we go back to the interaction properties, um, there are a lot of uh, different um, 
options as far as how to define the uh, the contact interaction between two surfaces, uh, and so that can be tricky. Another thing was um, you can see that rigid body translations becomes an issue, and you have to deal with that in a way that um, is uh, thoughtful and, and makes sense for the model that you're doing. In this case, we just said, well, let's put a symmetry boundary condition here so that it doesn't roll to the left or to the right. Um, but in reality, that might not be what the true condition is in this problem. Um, and so that, that I think, uh, would require further analysis.